Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Today's video I am very excited for because I am going to be talking about how to love an INFJ. I have been thinking about this topic for a while because I personally feel like the world could use a little more love. I am an INFJ and I am always philosophizing about these types of things like love in general and what we can do to be more loving in the world. So I think the INFJ personality is often a very deeply misunderstood personality type and we are often, I don't know, just feel very alone in the world. So we like it when people try to come into our world and understand us a little better. So as this personality type, I thought I would dissect some of the ways that I personally feel very warm inside when a person is trying to love me. I think the first thing to know about us is that we like to think a lot. I think the number one face that I make in public is this kind of disconnected and um, like glazed over eye look, like also sometimes like the deep thinker look. I'm just kind of like staring really intently into space because I just, I'm thinking a lot. And probably the most annoying thing that people do to me is they immediately label that as like, I don't know. They just put something on it in a superficial way of me being a quiet person, for instance, and that's just all I am to them. Or I often get called mysterious, which I'm really not trying to be. Uh, I feel in myself like I'm not mysterious, but people tend to think that I am. Um, I get called that quite often. I am also like unknowingly private, and when I am quiet, I don't even notice that I'm being quiet because I just have a very loud mind. I'm thinking a lot, usually about more profound things and um, ideas, chewing on philosophies, and not even realizing that I'm doing that. So it just comes very naturally to be a thinker. So I think one of the best ways to love an INFJ is to ask them what they are thinking. It's such a refreshing thing when somebody just asks in a very curious way. I can sense like the sentiment behind words as well, because we're often very sensitive people as well. So it's good to be actually curious about what they are thinking. I think the way that I like to be seen as an INFJ is a good book. Like I think people who love me the most tend to see me as a good book. Like I, I always have these motifs and themes and um, like characters in my mind that I'm dissecting and um, plot lines and stuff like that. So I think if you approach us that way, then you will get to know us better. Yeah, a good book. I think that's probably the best analogy for an INFJ. I think curiosity and open-mindedness are also traits that are highly attractive to INFJs. That's like a moth to a flame. Like we love people who are willing to get into their own minds and ask very explorative questions that are open-minded and uh, nuanced and get into the intricacies of ideas. I personally get very bored in conversations that are lacking this why element. I think we always have to have in the underlayers of any conversation some kind of like philosophical exploration of sorts. I don't know that you can really force that. Uh, some people don't have those interests. Like they don't care about the why and like the bigger conceptual picture of things. So I don't know that you necessarily have to be that way in order to love an INFJ, but it is helpful when a person wants and like has the desire to understand the concept of an INFJ for one. I think INFJs generally have in their own like pocket of experiences things that really define who they are and like stories in their past that were like very pivotal moments for them. So it's good to like dig into that and like ask them questions from their past specifically about why they are the way that they are and like focus on the why. So I think that's something that would make an INFJ feel known is when you can explore the whys behind their lives. I think another thing that people do that makes me feel loved is when they also treat me like a puzzle weirdly. Like I'm something to solve, <laughs> like not in a toxic way, but like 
in a way that they want to understand my mind and like what's going on inside of it. INFJs have introverted intuition as their dominant function, which means that they like seeing patterns and like they just have a strong like gut knowing. And there's a lot about intuition that is also deep and complex. We tend to see this world almost like it's a, I don't know, like a storybook in itself. Um, the hero's journey, having all these kind of complex interactions with things. And um, we usually live by following our gut and like kind of feel things at the gut level. We also have extroverted feeling as our auxiliary function. So that means that we tend to look at people for their values and are very like values driven. And we're also generally more like emotionally attuned. Not always, but I think most INFJ tend to just like look at other people's behaviors and like be extremely observant about them. And then we have introverted thinking as our tertiary function. And it's like our child's function. We're very curious people and we're kind of like very innocent and childlike in the way that we explore concepts. And then we have an inferior extroverted sensing function, which means that we tend to not be very grounded. I have very complex thoughts that are sometimes difficult to articulate and um, take the time. Sometimes I have to write them down and like write long pages even just to figure out what is going on inside of my head. So I think the more that you can explore in INFJ's mind, like the better off you will be in terms of making them feel like loved and um, just giving them that warm feeling inside. So I tend to work from like very complex thoughts to simple thoughts and like very deep thoughts to light thoughts. And I think I approach relationships that way as well. I can generally gauge very quickly a person's capacity for depth and complexity. And um, I tend to shut down around types that I feel like don't really have the capacity within them to like have those types of conversation. And I think that's where the bulk of our like being misunderstood comes from. Because I usually sense that out pretty quickly by kind of testing it with people like in conversation, like how complex of a thinker, how nuanced are you when you ask questions and stuff like that. I guess if that need isn't really being net, met, I tend, I tend to revert to more like simple type of conversation. I personally, I like to have like kind of that ratio of things of just like, like half of the time I am talking about like very deep and philosophically dense type of things. And then the other half of the time, I'm just, I just want to like conversation. Like I want to have fun and just like be playful. I think INFJs are often very playful too. Like they, they can be funny and like we enjoy humor. Like I personally don't really feel at home with a person until I can genuinely laugh with them. I think we, we like like dark humor as well. Like sarcastic, kind of um, nihilistic almost <laughs> humor. We like to make like dark things funny. I um, I think you need that kind of healthy balance of like as a way of being with a, an INFJ. It's just kind of like at least half and half for deep and light conversation. I think really good like fulfilling conversation is really crucial for an INFJ. I am very picky about conversations and like how intelligent they are and um, like maybe emotionally engaging as well. I, I like a good balance. I think um, anything that's like too intelligent and like knowledge based can be kind of dry and like anything too emotional is also kind of a turnoff for me. So we like to have that balance, I think, of just like intelligent kind of emotional connection. I also like talking about like very um, like taboo things in an objective way. Like to me, there should be like no topic that we can't talk about. Like I, you should feel like you can talk about anything with an INFJ because we can be like detached enough from whatever it is, even if it's like very personal, just like philosophize about it. Or I think also we're just really good at like, like talking about trauma and stuff like that. Um, like your most deeply burdened experiences that you have and just like ask questions about them in a way that makes you feel seen. And then we also like to do something with it though and like kind of fit it into your narrative in a way that makes you feel more empowered, I guess, coming out of that. Yeah, I just, I personally don't think there's anything off the table when it comes to conversation and I can get deep fast and just like talk about whatever in an objective way. So I like really open 
open-minded types of people who can do that as well. I think people who are very quick to judge and like quick to give an opinion without very much thoughtfulness can be very frustrating for INFJs just because of how nuanced we like to be in our thought life. I think another really big one for INFJs, if you want to love them, is honesty and authenticity. Like we really have to feel like you are honest in your words and actions. We, we see things at a very deep level and all the way down to like a person's intentions, like whether they're aware of them or not. Um, so I think the less filters, the better. And like the more self-aware you are, the better. And if you feel like you have room to grow in the realm of like insight, then you should ask your INFJ for that because they're just so good at like being counselors and um, like just probing that in a way that will make you feel understood and like not judged. I think that it's like really vital for INFJs to be listened to when it comes to their honest thoughts. And if you have like a relationship with one, you should ask them like, what do you think of our relationship right now? And like, where do you see it going? And they'll probably be able to pinpoint with like extreme accuracy. Like even I, I would say I do this like in the first day of knowing somebody, I know where all our trouble spots will be and like how that will project out into the future. I think like honesty is one of our quirks as well, because yeah, I think INFJ, first of all, are incredibly quirky people. Um, very weird. Like, I think the more, like, we're scared of, like, showing our weirdness and it's, like, hard for us to do it. Um, so, like, the more that you can be, like, accepting of an INFJ and, like, their quirky behaviors, the better. And they will, they will start to get more honest with you with time as well. Yeah, they're incredibly quirky people. I have so many weird quirks. It's kind of funny because I think when people, like, try to attract me, and like, I, I've noticed that they try to become like virtuous and um altruistic like I, I think i have these vibes that are like chronically innocent and um i don't know just like a good a good doer a do-gooder whoops <laughs> and um i think people feel that on me and so like people who try to impress me generally like start to talk about how they want to have a nonprofit someday or want to give to the poor and like all this stuff and I just think it's like the most hilarious thing because I like virtue and I think of all the types INFJ especially care about a person's character. Um, that's like the extroverted feeling type of function that we have. But more than anything, I like honesty over that. So I prefer a person who can admit to me when they're selfish and that they struggle with that or... Um, they're not like afraid to look at their shadow, especially like, yeah, I have this like terrible thing in my shadow. I think to me, that's like more attractive. I think of all the types INFJ like complex characters. Like we, we want somebody who is whole and like has these kind of shadowy aspects that they are aware of and are able to manage, but they're there. So it's like better just to be honest about your issues and like, like where you fall short in terms of things. Not to totally dismiss virtue, though, because to me, I only feel safe in a relationship with a person if they are, like, oriented in a positive way. You value things like kindness and goodness and um, patience, self-control, all of these things. But you can also own your shadow and just, like, know, like, the demons inside of it. You guys should drop in the comments what your guys' thoughts are on the five love languages and what you think is the most important one for an INFJ. I was going to go through each one, one by one, but actually I think I will just like a little bit. Um, let's see. What is that list? We have words of affirmation. That one I think is actually incredibly important for INFJs. I love words like and like expression through words. I think we're very like poetic storyteller types who like to craft like stories out of our experiences. And we like, like, very deep and significant romances, I think, that are um, profound and, like, have this unique narrative to them. I think in terms of, like, compliments and stuff like that, I tend to like when a person is just kind of observant about me, shares with me things that they notice, more, um, like, meaningful stuff. I personally get uncomfortable with, like, physical compliments 
and I've always been that way. And I like prefer a minimum of them. I don't think that you should get rid of them totally because I think that they are like important. Yeah, I think like heavier weight on like the more meaningful kind of words of affirmation. Quality time, I think, is the next one. And I think for INFJs, this is probably one of their top ones. Um, I like to be around a person. I think INFJs tend to like like dating, especially that is more like kind of quiet, simple. So things like walks, like coffee shop type stuff, like we don't really like the loud, like chaotic type of scene. I think it's also cool when you can have loved ones who you can do creative stuff with. I think at least like one kind of creative project is kind of cool to have. I think there's a lot of INFJs who like photography, for instance. I've always been kind of drawn to that, where I just like to like capture a person in a candid sort of way, their essence. And that's always kind of a fun creative activity that I like to do with a person. INFJ are like very creative and sensitive types. So there's usually at least one thing that they like to do, and it's really cool if they can have a partner who does it as well. Um, It doesn't have to be like the main thing, but it's usually something that's really helpful, I think, for their relationships. I think acts of service is next, and this one I think is probably also like something that might be important for INFJs. I personally kind of correlate this with character and like self-sacrifice yeah, we're drawn to like deep character development. And I think putting others before yourself is really cool to see in this world when most people are kind of in this domain of having these very fleeting and lusty kind of gluttonous type of relationships and um, casual things. And INFJs prefer something that is like more steadfast and devoted, that that be like displayed across time, you know, like it's a reliable pattern for that person to be that way. I think it's really cool, like when somebody is able to put others before themselves. But I think we can also like sense the place of the heart that it's coming from. I think oftentimes acts of service can be done with this like transactional type of motive. So we tend to like not like that too much (laughs) because we can feel it. We can feel why you're doing something. Then we have physical touch. And I think this one is incredibly important for our INFJs. It's kind of interesting because I think we like to be related to and connected with in like our minds and emotions. But because we have extroverted sensing as like a weak spot, we can be too much in our minds. And so it's really nice to have somebody who can like ground you back into this earth with physical touch. And um, yeah, I think it's actually one of the most important ones for us. And then gifts. (laughs) <laughs> gift giving. Honestly, I I really don't have much to say on gift giving because I think it's the most like materialistic one and it, it can be thoughtful, but I personally have a hard time with like giving gifts to people. I don't really know what they want and stuff. So I think INFJs might have a hard time with this one as well. I'm not really sure. You guys will have to let me know what your guys' thoughts are on gifts, but I personally don't have much to say about it. I think more than anything, what an INFJ needs in this world is somebody that they can like grow with, has that potential for growth. I think there's nothing like more maddening to an INFJ than like being stagnant in certain ways. Like I personally care about becoming more loving. Like I want to know how to embody it deeper and better. And um, I also just like have all these areas of my life that I'm continually trying to improve in. And that's so important to me to just like know, I think at the spiritual level as well, just like, am I improving? We like our relationships to grow like deeper, more intimate, more interesting. And like, um, just to make sure that that like uniqueness is always there. We can handle like very deep and raw emotional experiences. We need people who are capable of that as well, can just like be willing to have the capacity for like emotion and experiences that will cause them to like change and um, evolve. So I think INFJs mostly want partners and friends who are looking for that. Like they want us as INFJs to like dig into their personalities a bit and like explore their inner child, their inner world and like help them grow and expand in those ways. I think like another like extremely frustrating thing for INFJs is people who don't embody their words 
like all forms of cognitive dissonance are just like torture. Um, like somebody who is saying one thing and doing another, saying they don't have ulterior motives, but while having ulterior motives, saying that they care about intelligence while like only commenting on the physical aspects of who you are, saying that they're logical while they're actually just being like incredibly emotional. Yeah, all forms I think of cognitive dissonance are just like stressful. So we want people who are willing to sort of reconcile that, like all the, those areas that they might not see inside of themselves and um, have someone who can like appropriately call them out. And then I think we also like to be challenged in a way that's like healthy. I don't think we work very well with people who are like constant challengers, but people who also just like want to challenge our ca character to allow us to grow. Anyway, I am going to wrap up there on this topic. I didn't realize I had so much to say about it, and I don't think I covered everything. I had like a big list of stuff that I wanted to talk about, but I'll leave it up to you guys to drop in the comments your thoughts on how you like to be loved and what you find to be really important in your relationships, friendships, whatever else. And um, yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that. So thank you all for tuning in and um, listening. See you all next time.